Greenland. Wild and ice-covered, the world's largest island is humbling in scale. And now this vast Arctic territory has been thrust under a global spotlight. We've traveled to Greenland's remote southern tip. With no road links, the only way to get around is by boat and helicopter. And we're heading to a proposed mining site, which its owners say holds a treasure trove of valuable metals called rare earths. Many of the world's most in-demand minerals are needed for a range of technologies that we use every day. I found here in Greenland, deep beneath my feet, but they still remain largely untapped. Covering a large swathe of this mountainside, the Tambries project is partly owned by Australian-run mining outfit Critical Metals. We're sitting on one part of the ore body on this side of the fjord. It goes for one kilometre back that way and three kilometres back that way, there's three types of rock. You've got the black, the white, and the red. The red is what everyone's after. That's where the rare earths are. So this red stuff, this is what everybody wants to get their hands on. What does this go into? It goes into all sorts of high-end materials, mainly computers, guided missile systems, destroyers, uh, F-35 fighters. So that's for the defence side of it. Musk can't send a rocket up into space without having these heavy rare earths. And it all starts here with this humble rock. Rare earth elements are not actually rare, but this exotic sounding group of metals are vital for many of the technologies that we use every day, from smartphones and TV screens to magnets and even rockets. But China controls more than 90% of the world's rare earths, and now the US and Europe are trying to secure their own supplies of these and other critical minerals. Drilling more than 80 metres down, rock samples are being brought up to the surface. There's a lot of ore, enough for thousands of years, so it's very rich if you can sell all the products. An exploitation licence was granted five years ago, and the company hopes to kick off works by spring. But final approvals and some financing are still needed. Right now this is just raw mountainside, but in three years, five years, what will this operation look like? We'll have two pits initially. This fjord goes straight out to the North Atlantic and the markets are obviously Europe and the US. Interest in Greenland has surged. Its strategic Arctic location and potential mineral riches have caught the attention of US President Donald Trump. I think we're going to get it. One way or the other, we're going to get it. <laughs> Tambries has scored a 10-year agreement supplying material to an American processing facility that's backed by the Pentagon. Have things changed? Are you seeing a, a Trump bump? Absolutely. Uh, a lot of uh, companies that were operating here found it difficult, uh, have come back. Drill, baby, drill. That was his mantra. This drill program is costing us millions of dollars. The reason we're doing it is because of Trump's mantra and the fact that the US and EU really need these rare earths. However, mining has been slow to take off. There's only two active mines in the whole country. Further north, Luminaire exports a northrosite, used for e-glass, ceramics and even as moon dust for astronaut training. Here in the south, Amarok is drilling for gold while exploring for copper, nickel and rare earths and several other companies are trying to develop mines. The focus on Greenland has heightened over the last five, six, seven years. Right now we're actually starting to see a lot of projects moving forward. Mining is slow business. I expect we will have three to five mines, I hope, within the next 10 years. And that would be quick in my perspective. The Geographical Survey of Denmark and Greenland has spent many years mapping the territory's reserves. We have three deposits which are uh, very large. From a list of more than 30 minerals that the EU says are critically important, 24 are found in Greenland. If you see the ice-free area, that's like 400,000 square kilometres, so it's a pretty big landmass that's been underexplored. 
but mining in this remote northerly region is challenging and costly. It's remote, but a lot of that is a lack of infrastructure. If you're in the south, well, maybe you have access to open seas year-round, but if you're in the north, maybe you have to stockpile for 10 or 11 months per year and ship it all out in one month because everything is clogged with ice. Three of the world's largest rare earth deposits are found in Greenland, but processing this material is another matter. Rare earths are pretty hot because they're sort of a monopoly by China. Finding the deposit is relatively easy, mining is relatively easy, but the hard part, and that's where the money is, is actually to separate the different rare earth elements. Europe has lost that know-how. It's pretty yeah. much lost uh, in, in the West in general. Around 6,000 people live across South Greenland in its small towns, scattered villages and sheep farms. Livelihoods here rely on fishing, agriculture and tourism. But change is coming. As well as mines, a new airport will soon open and there are plans for a deep water port. In a region where people have been moving away, there are hopes things will turn around. Mining income is welcomed, but some residents are hesitant about the impact on the environment and local way of life. In the next two or three or four years, maybe three mines will go up and running. I hope it will bring better work opportunities for the local people, not just the cleaning jobs and the mechanics, but good jobs for the local people. Greenland is a place at a crossroads. As global demand for critical minerals grows, that could see Greenland play a small but increasingly important role on the world stage.